I, I think I agree, and and that's why I've been wanting to go attend the P4 meetings, and uh, you know I've looked at the BMV2 repo and the, the PNA repo, so I'm just trying to gather the pieces. Um, you know we do have tests, just so we know we do have tests that run. It's just that sometimes when we get to a stopping point, the test will run, and maybe Mercha or Chris can fill in the blanks a little bit. The, the test will run, but then we'll get stopped by something that either is it BMV2 or P4 can't provide. Um, and I can show examples of those tests. Well, they're they're yeah, like that's skip, what... they're skipped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're basically putting in markers to say skip this test because it's not supported, you know, in um, either P4 or BMV2. And that's where the work can be done on on what you were terming P4 extensions, correct? Mm hmm. OK. Yeah, I think so. And I so, can um, show you. Yeah, so Christina, uh, hey, this is Hanif. Uh, so, oh, hey, Hanif. Uh, Hey, long, um, long time, Hannah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you, you know, you guys basically are now holding this uh, meeting on Mondays because I also had a conflict. Mm -hmm. And that is why I was not able to attend. But I have a quick mm -hmm. question. Uh, hopefully, I'll be more regular now with uh, Monday's meetings. Oh, thanks. So, um, yeah. So, um, you know, thanks for putting this, you know, uh, this spreadsheet. And I was, I was looking at it, you know, just to. Just oh, a thought, sure. you know, we, we, yeah, we, we, we keep talking about, you know, obviously, you know, we started out with PSA and, you know, we are doing switch gaps and BMP2 and then, mm -hmm. and then so forth, right? Um, should we be talking about like, you know, PNA and instead of calling it switch gaps, maybe, you know, gaps to enable NIC uh, or something like that? And then, you know, uh, because essentially at the end of the day, you know, we, Although we started out with VMV2 and then it started out with the PSA and switch, switch, uh, I guess, you know, soft switch or whatever, you know, uh, simulating the switch and so forth. But but we are moving towards something that is essentially is a NIC and then that is mm -hmm. based on PNA yep. uh, architecture. Sure. And then, you know, we, we should be probably be, you know, started thinking about saying, okay, what are the NIC gaps, you know, that are there, right? As opposed to switch gaps, right? Yeah. When you say and NIC gaps, do you, do you mean to say PS, uh, P, uh, PNA, PNA gaps? PNA yeah, gaps? Yeah. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, PNA gaps. More like PNA gaps, right? Because if you think about it, right, I, if, if, if uh, BMB2 was written for the PSA, um, there, there shouldn't be switch gaps, right? There should not be switch gaps. No, I wouldn't think it. And I'm not as familiar with PSA. Um, I was going to go through the spec. And and I did have some gaps listed here and uh, up here as well and, and, and here, you know, so I had the P4 gaps around, you know, not looping packets back to the same port, um, you know, the markings not being set um, and then and these are just the ones we know about. You know, they, there could be a lot more. Um, and then the then the match kind values that we were using and a workaround for, and and the blockers that Andy had pointed out. But um, yeah, this is interesting. P4 and other common architectures, PSA, PNA, blah blah, don't contain list or range list. So this is just one thing. So you're saying um, this here we should have PNA and NIC, every NIC gaps, like every single NIC on the market. No, no, no. I think it's just mm -hmm. basically the, you know, like a reference model, right? Because mm -hmm. again, the PNA or a PSA, they also are not addressing every switch. They are they are doing a portable switch architecture. And then, mm -hmm. you know, supposedly PNA is doing the, uh, no, that's my view, right? You know, it's doing the uh, portable NIC architecture. Mm -hmm. So if 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 that's what the, the intention is, then then what we are really talking about is that uh, and then I would I would think that PNA perhaps is is uh, maybe a superset of PSA, so it has PSA plus all the other things. Maybe some things might go back into the PSA also that may be defined at the PNA level, but eventually are put back into the maybe there is a need for it in the PSA as well. But at the end of the day, I think we have to um, we have to just follow one uh, model and say that okay. Here is one architecture or reference architecture that we are going to uh, 
look at and then we have to put everything you know build whatever the the simulator that we are building whether we are extending bma2 or whether we are going to p4 dpdk or whatever be the case uh, mm -hmm. that has to just uh, uh, you know subscribe to pna right yeah yeah yeah, yeah it kind of uh, you know those are all good points <clears throat> if 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 bmb2 implemented the pna architecture which it doesn't then we could already start using it and find out the mismatches because the current design was designed assuming BS, PSA and there's some subtle differences right? because PNA distinguishes between host side and network side. Whereas PSA, everything's network, right? There's no host. Right. So right. there are subtle differences in how you define pipelines and how you do things. Um, and you can run into little mismatches. The deep P4, P4 DPTK implements um, the PNA. Yes, add on miss tables anyway here. Yeah, and so if that compiler closed the 128 bit gap, <laughs> we we'd be able to start experimenting with it more thoroughly and find any find out you know if that puts us a step closer or if we have to reinvestigate some assumptions. You know, we may find out. Oh, just switch throwing the switch to P and A doesn't. It, it might solve some problems, but it might bring might bring up some new ones that we haven't really figured out yet because we didn't try it really. So it would be nice to get to the point where we can say, let's try P four DPDK in earnest, and see if it closes some gaps and see if it causes any new problems. I think that would be a good step yeah. forward. So do you think when Sosutha is finished with, uh, she's going to raise a PR theoretically this week. Do you think when she's finished, um, we might be able to try? Well, yeah. She said it would she be raised, raised in, in she open raises the PR, we could even try it on her, on her fork. We don't have to wait for it to be accepted. If, if you know, and that's an experiment that can be done in, um, you know, by just changing possibly changing a uh you know a git sub module reference or something it depends mm -hmm. whether or not it's published to docker hub I don't, I don't know um we might have to wait for the pr because right now the way dash works is we grab stuff off of docker so mm -hmm. we don't have to rebuild anything mm -hmm. and until her pr is merged the docker file may not be available and um, so someone would have to do like a personal experiment to pull the source and build it, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we might be able to just wait. Maybe it's cleaner and easier to wait for it to merge. You know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud the steps. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we might ask Andy if he has an opinion on that since he was pretty involved in the early experiments. Yeah. And I don't see Andy here today. But I can always ask him in his meeting. I could just go to his meeting. So. Are, are we in communication with that developer? Did you say it was Rupa? So Sutha or Rupa? Oh, um, Sufa, Sufa. So Sutha? Sorry. Yeah. It, are we in connect contact with her regularly or is it kind of indirect? Oh, yeah. She she's attended the Dash uh, the Dash community calls and then um, through the Intel group I've been in direct contact with her, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. yep. um, it, it might be a good experiment even before she submits the PR to do a test run on mm -hmm. Dash as a regression test. Okay. You know, say, hey, if you mm -hmm. can provide a Docker file or, you know, experimentally and try it out to see if there's any surprises, mm -hmm. it might be a good experiment. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and that then I do kind of a good, good test case for people's, uh, you know, back ends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, trying to, trying to do what we're trying, what we're trying to do with the stateful is just different, you know, like with mm -hmm. all the scale and the, and the, the stateful processing and all the tracking is, it's just difficult. Yeah, you, I, I posted a question. Is this going to be the new meeting time? I, I hadn't heard that. I heard. I thought this was an exception. This this was the ahead. exception. This was the exception. So uh, three people answered the 
the um, survey that I sent out saying that two people preferred Thursdays still actually at the same time. It was odd. And then one person preferred Monday. Um, I'd like to get a time where it's convenient for you all and mm -hmm. and riff, of course. Yeah. So is Monday preferable to you, Chris? This this slot does work for me, but I don't mm -hmm. I don't think I'm the only most one. Yeah, that and it works and it works side. for Hanif. And I just need to make sure that it won't be a conflict for Riff ongoing or someone from the Microsoft team, you know. And so I'll follow up I, with that. Hmm? I wonder if a Doodle poll that lets you really pick pick you know arbitrary time slots. Um, mm -hmm. the, the the survey that you sent made it hard to indicate multiple options mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you know which day or whatever it was it was not it didn't give you a, a way to find out all the available times of all the people yeah and pick pick the best match mm -hmm. you, you might consider a different survey form mm -hmm. yeah that's what i think doodle or okay. or something like that okay the, the the radio button form was not very um flexible and giving options. Okay. Sure. Sure. I can do that for sure. Um, so I guess, you know, for me, I, I feel like, I feel like, okay, I've worked on this and I could use a pointer for where should I be looking next or where should I be going next? And I'm happy to, like I said, attend the P4 calls. I mean, the, but the, it the, looks the, like the we're going to ask, yeah, we're going to ask Sosutha if maybe once this 128 is resolved, maybe we could run a test. So that would be cool. And we'll wait for her to reply. And, um, you know, that, I don't know, Ted, you're newer to the group. Do you have any ideas about this or Farhat? I don't because I'm mm -hmm. going to try to get Neil to attend. And so his mm -hmm. schedule is probably more important than mine. For mm -hmm. me, um, Monday is fine, but I wish we could start uh, later um, because I have a 10:30 um, uh, to 11:30 uh, um, uh, meeting that usually goes over <laughs> like mm -hmm. it did today. I've got my yeah. go-to-market meeting, so I'm supposed to lead it too. So, oh, okay. I, right. I, 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 I'd be into Thursday because that's mm -hmm. fairly open. I don't have any regulars on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Friday is my mm -hmm. best day, but sure. you know, I don't know. I'll I'll try to track to you guys, and uh, I'll yeah. figure out what works for Neil. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. So, Chris, remind me in the pipeline folder these tests. These are the the LibSci and SciThrift tests, and then if we backed out into here and went into the regular test folder, well, actually, there was a README and pipeline. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. The, the pipeline folder doesn't really contain any tests that are in use. That was kind of the original mm -hmm. spawning ground, but they're really mm -hmm. under the up top level test directory. Okay. All right. So here, guys. And you have to comb through all the code to find out things that are skipped, right? Yes. But, you know, someone could go in and do a grep and find out all the skipped test cases. Yeah. And I think they're generally in this scale, but I don't remember. It's been a while. You know, yeah. Um, Maybe I could run through and find those. Um, in, Intel primarily had, you know, Field Vision's help had primarily implemented a mm -hmm. large number of tests that, mm -hmm. um, according to them, had ran on Mount Evans, but had to be um, skipped for BMV2. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So there is that body of tests, and it would be interesting to know if we got dp dk target working right would those tests work for dpdk that would be very interesting yeah so maybe christina to check for list of skip tests because i don't think i collated those as we were going forward so uh back then okay um mercy i think in the chat you're being asked for your email Okay, just I'll if you can. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and so um, I guess just Thanks. to, yeah, and so hope, and, and I'll check with Riff on maybe the data plane app and seeing, you know, um, how we plan to release documentation for that soon. So, because theoretically it would fill in gaps. So, yeah, um, 
maybe I can state for the people who are on the call some mm-hmm. things that you and I had talked about one on one and what some of my thoughts were. Mm-hmm. I'd raised the question, I think I'd raised this actually in a dash regular meeting. You know, we have this these data plane app program, which um it's trying to solve a few different problems. I think I thought that one of them was the lack of this add-on miss. And also mm-hmm. it's just it was a POC, it was really kind of an experiment to see how can we how can people customize the dash data plane. And my question was, are some of these is some of the motivation to compensate for fundamental lack in the BMB2? And would would that lack be answered by doing something in P4D PDK? Yeah. Or, and another question was, do we want to put effort in improving the, the open source targets rather than coming up with something that's kind of a one off just for Dash? You know, coming up with new programs like written in VPP when a little bit of effort put into DPDK might yield the same or more common good. And, you know, it's going to take some analysis to figure that out. I just didn't have a, a good understanding of how much of this work could have been just put into something that yields a larger common benefit in a more generic way rather than custom a custom app that really only has one one place you know in the world and that is as a dash add-on so to speak um I, I don't think all the right people are on this call right now to answer mm-hmm. that question again you know, like riff mm-hmm. and others mm-hmm. but that was that was my concern that we were inventing new solutions that didn't have a let's say didn't contribute in a, in a completely common reusable way it's kind mm-hmm. of a unique solution um and i don't know the answer because i'm not deep enough in the weeds yeah and that's where i think like it would and that's why i had, i invited tim to basic basically talk about you know would it be beneficial to try and get, gather or gain engagement from other clouds you know not just mm-hmm. hardware suppliers but you know people who would be using this Mm -hmm. So what what do you think, Tim? I'm interested in learning more because I know, Christina, you and I, like, Mm -hmm. we we just got connected on Briefly talked, yeah. 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 So definitely interested in learning more and figuring out how we can make this more effective rather than than just Mm kind of working with uh, specific partners. But yes, I I think it's still too early for me to... uh, Yeah have a a solid opinion on that matter at this time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, thank you for that. I, um, you know, I think our idealistically a long time ago, we were trying to basically define the existing, you know, cloud behaviors and Azure was putting theirs forward as an example, although any other provider could put their scenarios forward, like maybe DNAT or MNAT or, you know, other things that we haven't defined yet. And then and then testing those as if we were testing in hardware. That was, you know, the idea. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Chris, were you going to say something? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. I'm fine. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, then um, I guess I'll move forward with my two pieces. I'll talk to SoSuth. I'll look for the skip tests. I'll try and I guess if P4 isn't going to be happening, maybe I could schedule a one off meeting with some of the people, you know, Andy or Mario or someone from there. Um, You know, not not that it's my place to ask, but what were you hoping to get out of the P4 language design working group? Because that's very specific kind of uh, group that they work on pure language design issues okay not, not architect not architecture is there a place where they talk more about architecture or i could ask they them in that arch- meeting yeah the architecture working group mm-hmm. okay yeah if you go to language design i think yeah i mean i used to go to those they're like extremely language geeky you know like yeah you know should this expression syntax be allowed under this condition it's so <laughs> deep deep in the in weeds that, yeah <laughs> uh, okay. i mean i'm a okay. fish out of water there i think <laughs> okay i think you'd um, find it perplexing oh my, my we'll see. i mean i'm not saying you shouldn't go 
to get a mm -hmm. sense of it, a taste of it, yeah. but it's not, mm -hmm. it's not where you discuss BMV2 versus DPDK. Yeah. yeah. Or the capabilities of P4, or how it's integrating. Yeah. Well, no, no, that that's a broad question. It could be the capabilities mm -hmm. of P4, but not platform stuff generally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just making some notes. Yeah. Okay. Like if you want to add a new symbol to use in, a, in an expression or or say, uh, I, you know, I want to be able to have uh, modular modular code that is like object oriented. That, that's mm -hmm. the kind of stuff. Yeah. But should okay. this be a colon or a semicolon? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah, All right. these are these well, are language wizards. OK, well, I, uh, thank you guys for your time. And if you have, you know, pointers for me other than what we talked about today to move forward, you know, I'm working on this as, you know, my best effort, you know, with all the other things we all have going on. So, oh, and then I guess I will see you if anyone goes to OCP. I'll see you down there. Yeah, have fun. You know it. You yeah, know perfect. it. Perfect. OK, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming. I appreciate it. And yeah, have a good day. Thank you, Christian. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming, Hanif. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.